Welcome to RCR Wireless News. I'm Martha DeGrasse, and I'm joined today by John McCree. He is Executive Vice President of Corporate Development at GenBand. John, thanks for being here today. Thank you, Martha. So you are leading the charge on acquisitions for GenBand, and you have had a busy year already. Uh, you, today, you're announcing the acquisition of UReach Technologies, and we are going to talk about that in a minute. But first, I'd like to sort of step back and hear about um, what, you're look, what you've been looking at with these acquisitions. I know that, that Fring is a similar company to UReach that you, we talked about, uh, I think, less than two months ago. And so um, I think that maybe we can start to see a little bit of a trend here. And I'd like to, to sort of hear about your thoughts as you, as you look at acquisitions in this space. Sure. So, uh, you know, I think like everybody, we've got our own map of, of uh, bits of technology we're interested in or, or parts of the market that we'd like to address that would take us a long time to get at if we went at with an organic play. And so to the extent that we can find uh, uh, an inorganic way to address that, then that, that's exactly what we try to do. Now, of course, that's not always possible. Sometimes, you know, we look at things that, that would be of interesting and good fit to us, but we can't work out a deal or you know, the other party, uh, you know, maybe has other plans, but uh, the extent we can make that happen, then it's obviously if we can accelerate our go-to-market, you know, we feel like we've got a good idea of where there's growth opportunities for us and, and you know, where we can help our customers and, and add value to them. If we can find a way to do that inorganically, that's going to be, uh, that's gonna be a, a great opportunity for us to accelerate. So what are some of these specific areas where you see customer needs that you need to address? Yeah, so, so uh, I mean, that's hard to describe, to be honest, because, uh, you know, obviously uh, we want to keep some of our plans confidential, but the, you know, I think we look at it fundamentally as, for GenBand, we're a company that's associated with real-time communications, and, you know, the end user for that has, since the beginning of time, been a uh, large enterprise, small, medium business, and consumer. So those are the end users of our products, whether it's, uh, you know, stuff out of our legacy portfolio that we got from Nortel, whether it's part of our soft switch or our SBC or part of the, some of the newer stuff we're doing. Um, what we are finding, though, there's a bit of fragmentation in terms of go-to-market. So, you know, the carriers are finding they're under attack from over the top and other places, you know, people taking away business. If you look at the traditional enterprise communication infrastructure, you know, there are companies that once upon a time, you know, were really dominant that are also having a tougher time. So, uh, you know, we're continuing to look for ways to bring those products to the end users. Sometimes that's going to be new channels. Other times it's going to be helping our traditional customers to defend themselves without threats. So, for example, you know, the uh, uh, Fring, which we acquired last year, you know, they started to make the shift to providing a, a white label OTT that carriers could use really as a counterattack, uh, you know, against some of, the, some of the businesses going away. And what they were just in a situation where as a smaller company and, you know, venture back, they were having a hard time, you know, building up the go-to-market capability. So we brought it into GenBand where we've got, you know, a couple hundred people in carrier sales and, and we're able to really commercialize that. And, you know, we, we announced one customer last year, but we've got definitely more in the pipeline. Um, you know, you reach a similar story, a great solution, you know, had been really focused on and had a great idea about how to, how to develop over-the-top apps for, for small, medium business, uh, had started to go to, to talk to carriers, but they had a very small sales force only in the United States. They weren't marketing anywhere else in the world. Uh, so right away, we can take those things into our global sales force and take what was a good idea and, and help it go faster. And, and likewise, that's still, uh, you know, a big benefit for GenBand because now we have these solutions that... You know, both our traditional customers, the carriers, but also some of you know their new potential customers that have other channels to the enterprise or to the consumer uh, can find useful as well. So, what are some of the specific UReach apps that you are interested in? Well, so <clears throat> obviously their their voicemail is the is the main one, and that that's most of their revenue. You know, they've got uh, they're their biggest customers, Verizon, but they've also got companies like Fairpoint and Bell Canada and other customers that are you know already theirs. Uh, they have some very interesting applications. You can you can see them in the App Store or Google Play. You know, again around SMB. So, and it's not going to sound um, uh, super sexy because some of the names have been around for a while. But things like auto attendant and small call centers and uh, second line for business, but all implemented in a in a really nice way that allows the end user to really manage their service uh, and also to you know help small companies look bigger. So, you know, we, we're probably going to adjust some of these as we roll them out as GenBand. You know, we're not going to turn everything off, or pardon me, we're not going to turn anything off to the extent that there are customers out there who have, 
you reach applications that they're, they're using today. And, you know, they had uh, seven figures of over-the-top revenue, so it wasn't like they had nothing. Uh, so that's, that's a good user base to build off of. And then what we're going to do is obviously be able to take that, take that global, but also provide some synergy and integrate with some of the existing GenMan products. You know, it's, uh, it's hard. It, it, some of that stuff is still being worked, to be honest. You know, we haven't closed the transaction until the end of this month. But I'll just give an example from the last one from Fring. Fring was looking to get into WebRTC. They felt that it was important that they were able to have a desktop play, and they didn't have one. Uh, GenBand has a great WebRTC product, you know, which we call Spider, which we launched last year. Uh, that was an immediate opportunity. And what we found now is, you know, we put the Spider product in the Fring cloud and are able to make that available to uh, the, the Fring uh, uh, user base and Fring prospects. And likewise, bring Fring to our prospects. So we were able to get an immediate synergy where both companies were able to take their portfolio where they wanted to go much faster because we each had a complementary part of the technology, uh, and then take that to the sales force and drive forward. So now we've got you know one more uh, big chunk of uh, uh, of applications in the quiver. Again, they're more SMB oriented versus consumer, uh, but that's another area that's going to be of interest. Yeah, and I know that, that you're move, working to move a lot to the cloud. Um, I think that even phone numbers are in the cloud now. And um, I'm wondering if, if UReach is going to fit into that, if people are going to be able to, you know, to access their voicemail from many different devices based on, um, you know, your, your servers in the cloud. Yeah, absolutely. So that, I mean, that's part of a, a, even their existing service is uh, being able to do that kind of stuff in the cloud. And they've also got... You know, again, just to look at something they've already launched, what they, I think they call it business line. It, it's a, a, a second line that effectively is going to appear on your mobile device. So if you're a sole proprietor, you know, you, you, you're, you run a plumbing company or a small legal firm, you, you now have this ability to put uh, a simple self-managed auto attendant, you know, press one for uh, service, press two for emergency, press three for a billing question, you know, the standard stuff. It'll all come back maybe to the same phone line at the end of the day, but it comes with information and context of who's calling, what they're asking about. And so, you know, even though you're trying to run your personal life and your business all off one phone, um, you know, that you can do that in a, in a relatively sophisticated way without a big uh, expense. It's basically a subscription service from the cloud like, uh, you know, like everything else uh, is going these days. Okay, great. And we do hear a lot about video calls and video conferencing these days, but I'm curious what you hear from the carriers and from their enterprise customers. Is, is there a big demand for that? I know that the capabilities are coming, but is, is the demand as, as big as one would hope it would be? Do people really want to substitute video calls for face-to-face -face meetings? Yeah, so it's interesting uh, in that I would say we get two completely different answers to that question depending on who we're talking to. Uh, you know, the Fring uh, acquisition that we did last year, their product already had video capability, including video conferencing. So you can have a, a multi, excuse me, a multi-party video call. Uh, but uh, some of the carriers, you know, they, they are saying, hey, we're, you know, let's save that for a later phase. Let's start with more basic service. We're not sure our users are ready. Others are are more interested in, you know, look, maybe partly depends, I'm sure, on the competitive dynamic for an individual carrier in, in their market whether they're looking for an edge or whether they're, you know, more looking to be defensive. So there's a lot of factors going into it beyond just, uh, you know, whether it works or not. Uh, but it certainly does work, absolutely. And, and, you know, it's something that, and we use it internally. I mean, here you, you and I are using it for this. But inside GenBand, you know, a lot of groups are already using that on a regular basis. And I guess like a lot of technologies, it takes a while for it to, to be adopted, to cross the chasm, as it were, and for it to become normal. It's it. The things that seem totally normal to us today were weird 10 years ago or even five years ago in some cases. So uh, we'll see how that plays out. But, uh, you know, the short, there is no one right answer to your question, unfortunately. Some carriers are very interested. Others are, are more cautious. Okay, okay. And then as far as you reach, is their solution almost always white labeled or presented through the carrier or do they have a branded solution? So, so the bulk of the revenue that uh, they have today is, is traditional voicemail sold to carriers for them to deploy for their end users, be they mobile or be they, uh, be they wireline. Um, the new applications, they've been branding uh, themselves as you reach, and they sell them. You can go to youreach.com on the web. You can go to the, the Google Play and, and Apple and, uh, App Store, as I mentioned. 
Uh, however, they are developed for white label, and, and white label is certainly something that we're going to pursue, is bringing these to our carrier customers as applications that they can launch and with their brand, you know, fully skinned with their uh, with their play and so on, so that they can it can appear to be their product. And again, well, I think we're going to see different um, reactions. You know, the, the larger carriers actually tend to be much more consumer oriented, and the smaller guys sometimes are more interested in business. Some of the plays, you know, in in here in the United States, we all remember Nextel, which built their whole company on SMB. I mean, it, it was amazing and built a huge valuation. And you know, that that market ended up being served other ways now, but. There certainly are carriers who are focused on different segments, and so I'm sure we're going to find some that are more interested in this set of applications than others. But do you expect that you'll maintain the UReach brand, or, or it might fade away a little bit? Uh, for now, we're going to maintain it because, again, you know, customers know it. The, we we don't want to spook or scare off the customers that are using it. You know, that that's useful for a few reasons. Obviously, they're paying customers, and and that's valuable. But also, you know, we can continue to learn a lot by, you know, having people who are directly using stuff that we're directly tied to. You know, we don't see ourselves as a direct consumer kind of company in general. We're, you know, we're going to be more, again, with the carriers or maybe some non-traditional uh, uh, carrier resellers down the road. So I don't think we're going to aggressively push that side. You know, we may change our mind, but for now, I don't think we're going to aggressively push that side. But likewise, we see no reason to turn it off. Whether we ultimately rebrand it, um, you know, that's a question that we've deferred for now. Um, it doesn't seem that something that... Uh, you know, we need to make a decision on until we've operated the business for a little while. Right, right. It's interesting though because with Fring as well, you you are maybe incidentally, but you are getting more into the consumer space. Isn't that right? Yeah, but again, uh, our you know, our main focus with Fring is through carriers. So you know, lots of our existing technology is used by carriers to service their consumer customers. Uh, the same thing is true with Fring. We're just helping them in a different way. And I would I would argue that we are getting more com our, our solution becomes more complete and more packaged when we bring a carrier something like Fring than when we brought them you know soft switches for when to which they add products from many other vendors to make, make an ultimate solution. Whereas with Fring, because it's a, a sat or pardon me a, a communications as a service, everything's in the cloud. There's much less for the carrier to do. But what that means is they can get to market much faster. I, I, I mean you, you know order of magnitude faster. Whereas it might have taken them a year or two to plan and launch a service in the old world. Yeah, you know, we've gotten people up and running uh, with Fring in a matter of weeks, to where they're, you know, in the case of Buig, you know, fully out and deployed, and that one's announced. But we got a bunch of others that are in pilot and started deployment, and you know, because there's just much less for them to do to get started than there is with the traditional model of buy many things from many vendors, put it together, make it work, test it, play, get billing to involved, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it does, uh, it definitely does accelerate things. Okay, great. Well, one one final topic I'd like to touch on is is the integration of all this from a software perspective. Uh, obviously, your engineers, you reach engineers, Spring engineers, and and everything you know becoming more and more virtualized. So, if you could just discuss that just a little bit, um, you know, the challenges of working together. I'm guessing that with both of these acquisitions, many if not most of the employees have come over to GenBand, but um, I'm sure it's you know an interesting dynamic, and I, I'd like to you know hear some of your perspective on that. Sure. So uh, the dynamic is primarily one of excitement because you know for the companies that are coming in for Fring and for UReach, uh, they were uh, I would say the engineers and the product people were a little bit frustrated because they had great ideas, and they could partially implement them, uh, they didn't really have the the weight to go out and win big carriers you know on their own, and so they didn't have the chance to realize their vision. On the GenBand side, we have a different problem. It's not, it's not that we don't have the ideas either or that we don't have the customers, but there's still you know, many other choices of things to do. So the chance to accelerate, to get a big chunk of technology and a good team all in one shot is exciting for everyone. And I gave you the example of, uh, of Fring and Spider, you know, our WebRTC product, which you know, we closed that acquisition in October. That's already an offer that's done, integrated, and you know, customers are playing with you know, just a few months later. So, uh, so far the collaboration has been fantastic. Uh, you know, the, they all speak the same language and all drive to common things. You know, obviously we've got little bits of overlap and so on that we need to work out. Uh, one of the tougher sides, for example, is when, when you talk about platforms. So, guys who've chosen slightly different ways to solve the same problem, and it would be useful for us to get that together, but, you know, at the end of the day, that's not the most important problem. We try to focus on what are the offers we're taking to the end user. You know, what are the offers we're going to say, hey, Mr. Carrier, here are the things that you can take to your end users from GenBand. It's fully integrated, ready to go. 
that's the first step. And then coming back and figuring out the extent that we've got overlap, duplication, you know, gaps in the implementation, you know, we can work that out. The most important thing is go, go create value by, uh, by getting these, uh, these applications and these solutions in the hand of end users. Okay, great. Is there anything else that you think is important to discuss here? Well, I, I just think, you know, come back again, you know, it's an opportunity for us to accelerate our growth, you know, get into markets that uh, that we want to get at and we can go a little faster. I think it's great for the people from, you know, the UReach team seems to be excited coming to GenBand and we're going to do everything we can to make sure that they, they stay that way and that we, uh, you know, give them a, a great environment to, uh, to fulfill their vision and ideas and bring that all into common solutions. So, you know, we're excited. It's uh, it's been a nice find, and you know we've had we've had you now a few acquisitions in a row that have that have worked out nicely for us and, and are performing. So we'll continue to look uh, in the future for other opportunities that way. Yeah. Well, what what is next? What should we look for? Well, I guess we'll have to wait to, till we announce that one. All right. Well, let us know, please. John McCready, Jin Van. Thanks so much for being here today. Thank you, Martha. Appreciate it.